here we go folks i'm bringing you the glute guide today and we're going to start off with just the anatomy as usual uh and a special thanks to georgina for helping me out with this video the gluteus maximus can be divided into two subregions, which is upper and lower the lower region of the glute contributes mainly to hip extension so I'll think hip thrust, deadlift, squat, all hip extension moves. While the upper glute contributes to hip extension, hip external rotation, so if you take your leg and take your knee and your foot and turn it outwards, that's hip external rotation. And then you've also got hip abduction. So think the hip abduction machine or if you're doing like a cable side raise at the hip, suggesting that the gluteus maximus does do well having a variety of different movements, taking advantage of each of these functions. All right, on to our functions. So first we have hip extension. This is where the bulk of your glute work is going to come in. And as I said, we can divide the glutes into two subregions, the upper and lower, and hip extension will train both of these functions adequately well. You'll find hip extension on any kind of squat or uh, deadlift movement. Uh, any hinge or squat pattern will involve hip extension, but we're going to talk about emphasizing those functions through the use of adjusting the resistance here in a second. Next, hip external rotation. So this is when you turn your leg outward. Your hip is externally rotating to point your knee and toe outward. And I've got an exercise for you that will make use of this function. And finally, for your glute medius, or the side butt, as I like to call it, we have hip abduction. And again, when you hear abduct, think alien abduction, to take away from the body. The glutes have their best leverage when they are in their shortest position. And the glutes' shortest position is in extension. So if you're just standing up, your glutes are in a more contracted, shortened position. So again, you want the forces to be at their highest when you have your hips pushed forward. Now some movements do this automatically. For example, the hip thrust. On movements in which the forces are not at their highest when your glutes are in a more contracted position. So for example, a squat. When you squat, the forces are at their highest when you're at the bottom of the movement or when the glutes are in a more extended position. But you can do a few things, a couple of clever tricks and tactics to make a better contraction for your glutes on movements like that. So what you could do with a squat, for example, is tie a band to something behind you and then loop the band around your hips. Now when you perform the squat, when you get to the top of the movement, you have to push your hips forward against the band. So now on the squat, you get a nice lengthening of the glutes at the bottom of the movement, and then when you hit the top and you push against the band, you get a really great contraction. So kill two birds with one stone. And there's several other techniques like this, which we will get into. We also know from the research that the glutes can experience stretch-mediated hypertrophy. And so we will also have some movements in the exercise section that take advantage of that. However, there are some movements that do this automatically. So like I said a little bit earlier about the squat versus the hip thrust, the squat, the peak forces are when you're at the bottom of the movement or when the glute is in a lengthened position. So a squat will take care of most of your quote unquote stretch mediated hypertrophy needs for the glutes. I always suggest covering all your bases with your movements, try to hit all the functions of said body part with your exercise selection. So our main two categories here will be a movement in which the forces are at their highest when the hips are extended, so a hip thrust variation of some sort, and another movement in which the forces are at their highest when the glutes are lengthened, so a squat variation of some sort. Those are your two main things that you need to make sure you're hitting with your glute training. Another category, subcategory we'll call it, will be hip abduction and also hip external rotation. If you want your glute medius to grow, uh, which uh, I like to call the side butt, it's just on the side, can make the glutes look a lot more round, then we need to have a hip abduction 
and also a hip external rotation exercise. Now you can kill two of those functions, both of those functions with just one move, which I will show you here in a second, or you can divide them up. Totally up to you. Unfortunately, we don't have very much information on the fiber typing of the glutes. And therefore, we don't know how susceptible to muscle damage the glutes are. So I would tell you to go in the middle. Just look for balance. So between two and four sets, between eight and 12 reps. Now, if you're doing a more isolation type movement, I would go higher on the reps. So if we're doing a glute kickback, a little bit higher on the reps, 12 to 15. If we're doing a hip abduction movement, higher on the reps, 12 to 15. And for our big compound movements, our squat and our hip thrust variations, I would go heavier. Again, just so we hit all of our bases. The other consideration here is, are you happy with where your glutes are and just wanna maintain, or are you looking for growth? And how quickly do you want that growth to happen? We do know that there is a dose response relationship between volume and muscle growth. And so the more volume you do, the more growth you're going to see ultimately, so long as you're recovering from said muscle damage. So if you wanna specialize or focus on your glutes, if they're important, you feel like they're lagging, that you want them to come up, I would hit them as many as three or four times a week. If you are happy with where your glutes are, then go more once or twice. All right, on to the exercise section. So first and foremost, the barbell hip thrust. Now hip thrust should make up the bulk of your glute training. Again, the glutes function very well when they're in a shortened position and the tension on this exercise is at its highest when you are contracting your glutes or when you're in that top position. So make sure you spend an extra second in that extended position and get a little more bang for your buck on this exercise. Also wanted to give you a dumbbell variation. Now the challenge with this is eventually you're gonna get too strong to use a dumbbell. One, the dumbbell will be not heavy enough. And two, getting a heavier dumbbell onto your hips can be a challenge unless you have a partner, of course. So if you are not used to hip thrusts, I would start here. Give it a couple weeks. And again, your strength will dictate when it's time to move on up to the barbell. Next, good old fashioned barbell back squat. Now again, the tension is at its highest when the glutes are in their lengthened position. And you know when the tension is at its highest when the angle of the joint is 90 degrees against resistance. So your knees and your hips are hitting 90 degrees at the bottom of this movement, hence the movement being its toughest at the bottom when the glutes are lengthened. Similar thing here, I wanted to give you an extra variation in case the barbell back squat was a little bit too difficult for you. You can start with a goblet squat. And as I said earlier, we can get a little more bang for our buck with this exercise that we can't really get on a barbell, or we can, but it's a little too difficult. And that method is here. So you see a band tied around Georgina's hips, and the band is pulling her backwards. So we're getting a nice lengthening against resistance because the band is pulling backwards, so we're lengthening the glutes, but we're also contracting the glutes against resistance again because the band is pulling backwards instead of pulling you straight down like a hinge or squat pattern would. So goblet squat, add a band or goblet good morning, add a band onto it so you can get that contraction at the end. Next exercise, glute kickback. Now I personally like to put the cable anchor a little bit higher on this exercise so we can emphasize the lengthened position. However, if you're already training the lengthened position in the same workout with squats, then I would go a little bit lower with the cable so we can emphasize the contraction. Cable hip abduction for the glute medius or the side butt. Now I strongly prefer the cables over the machine because the machine has a limited range of motion. And with a cable, as you can see, Georgina is able to let her leg cross all the way over the body so you get a much longer range of motion with cables than you do with the machine but the machine works well too 
And then finally, for your upper glutes and glute medius, banded clamshell. Now she is externally rotating her hips as that knee is raising. She's also extending the hips by pushing the hips forward. And we've also got hip abduction happening too. Three birds, one stone. Okay, one last thing. I put all of the aforementioned concepts into a few workouts. Uh, I've got a beginner workout, an intermediate workout, and an advanced workout. They are all linked below in the description. And you can find over at our site, musclewiki.com, along with dozens of other workouts. So go check that out when you get a chance. Thank you guys for listening. As always, please beat up that like button for us. It helps immensely. Share the video. And I will see you with the next one. Deuces.